war was ramping up and the mood of the nation was one of great concern and worry. And now you have this, you have this whole thing. A, you don't know who the other beings are. You don't know what their intentions are. You really don't know anything about them, except that they're not us. And so it's this tremendous unknown. Project Sign. Project Sign was the initial response, but it only lasted for just over a year. At first, it appeared as if the U.S. Air Force were trying to actually discover what the unidentified flying objects were. What do you think the government knows about UFOs that they're not telling us? Now, the, in my association with Project Blue Book, I, don't, I know very well that it was not a scientific project. Also, I also know that they never, never would notify the media when an the interesting case came up. They did everything they could UFOs. to keep it, down, keep it keep down. down. So they definitely withheld information. I will not go so far as to say that it was a, you know, a Machiavellian sinister cover-up or, or conspiracy. Or conspiracy. Right. I don't like those terms. But, uh, but withholding of documents, yes. And that's exactly what Peter Gerson has been so good at. Project Sign was actually taken somewhat seriously. According to the report of a captain of the U.S. Air Force, Captain Edward J. Ruppelt, the intelligence specialists at the Air Technical Intelligence Center ATIC, were so confident of getting answers to the UFO problem within a year at most. By the way, you might want to keep the name of Captain Edward J. Ruppelt in mind because he would later become a Project Blue Book director and the author of a book titled The Report on Unidentified Flying Objects. Captain Edward Ruppelt, the first chief of the Air Force's UFO investigation group, Project Blue Book, actually spoke and wrote about this. He stated, UFOs were seen more frequently around areas vital to the defense of the United States. Back to Project Sign. The UFO problem that the intelligence specialists at ATIC was looking to solve had nothing to do with if these UFOs existed or not. It was more about where it is from. Could it be the Russians at work? Or should we really gaze into space for answers? Could these UFOs have come from some other planet? Their findings would cause an internal split inside the group. There were those who believed that the UFOs were indeed from outside the planet Earth. Major Keyhole, what is your opinion of these new sightings of unidentified objects? I believe that some of them will prove to be of interplanetary origin. Well, there were others who maintained that it couldn't be true. By the time Project Sign ended, the official results were inconclusive. In their report, the flying saucers were neither confirmed nor denied. But that really wasn't the end of it. A document was authored by the project in 1948, and the document was called The Estimate of the Situation. This document was sent to the command chain of the U.S. Air Force. Ruppelt revealed that the majority of the specialists who worked on Project Sign were particularly impressed by one of the many reports of sightings. This particular report was the Child's Witted UFO encounter of the 24th of July 1948. This incident involved two pilots whose Douglas DC-3 airliner was almost hit by a torpedo-shaped UFO. The conclusion was that the level of technology that must have gone into such an aircraft could not have been realistic for either the US or the USSR. The only logical explanation was that it was from another planet. This belief was stated clearly in the document. When you say document, that could be a lease or title to a house. A document uh, is something that's, uh, that's thought of being a heavy piece of paper. A document can also be a very simple piece of paper that contains really non-usable information. So you're using the word 900 documents. 900 pages of documents. Right. I don't know exactly. Well, I don't what, are, what, 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 are, what are these pages document? Um, sightings, but... Uh, 
what are referred to in the documents by responsible reliable persons you see all along before these documents were released we've been reading civilian reports about individuals who've been seeing flying saucers or u f o s a flying disks and they will do their credibility now in the documents these pages that were released by the f b i the cia we see there was no question in the government's mind that these persons were reliable they refer to in the documents as early as nineteen forty nine as reliable responsible military officials generals Air Force personnel seeing these unconventional aerial objects. But guess what? The document was rejected by the Air Force for lack of physical evidence. What's more, all copies were ordered to be destroyed. The U.S. Air Force would later deny the existence of this document, even resisting any attempt to use the Freedom of Information Act in getting a hold of it. However, Ruppelt and several other sources confirmed the existence of this document. One of these sources was Dr. Alan Hynek. Dr. Hynek was a scientific consultant and UFO skeptic brought in to work on both Project Sign and Project Blue Book. For 22 years, Dr. Hynek served as a scientific consultant for the U.S. Air Force's investigation into UFOs called Project Blue Book. His role and shocking transformation will be discussed shortly. But Project Sign wasn't shut down to start Project Blue Book. There was another project in between. This project is called Project Grudge. 